Emil Vachi, born 1910. Died June 6, 1986. At age 73, Vachi was a mob insider who worked as a maitre d' at Ernesto's Backstreet Restaurant at 3603 East Indian School Road in Phoenix, Arizona. He'd only held the position for six months and had a sideline running a Las Vegas junket business with Chicago mob burglars Paul Shiro, Richard Cleary, and Carl Urbanati, all of whom had worked for Tony Spilatro. Shiro, an Arizona resident for decades, was a killer and one of Spilatro's main enforcers. On the night of June 6, 1986, Vachi got his first and only phone call while at work. Co-workers reported that he ran to the phone and then seemed unusually happy the rest of the night. He left at 11.40 p.m. and was last seen walking toward his wife's car in the parking lot. Vachi had already testified twice before a federal grand jury investigating casino skimming and other activities by Spilatro. This time he had been granted immunity and was due to testify several days before he was killed. For a while there was speculation in law enforcement and press circles that Tony Spilatro had ordered the Vachi murder without approval from Chicago which resulted in Spilatro being killed. Years later at the Family Secrets trial in Chicago in 2007, mob killer Nick Calabrese described for jurors how he and several other alleged mob killers went about stalking Vachi for weeks in Phoenix before kidnapping him as he left his job that night. Calabrese testified that he learned alleged mob underboss Jimmy Marcello had financed the hit. Calabrese stated that the crew had ventured out west from Chicago originally to hunt down and murder Tony Spilatro because, he said, Spilatro's deals were bringing a lot of heat on the outfit and he also was having a fling with the wife of a casino executive, Lefty Rosenthal. However, Spilatro lived that day because they couldn't find him, instead the crew detoured to Phoenix where they planned to murder Emil Vachi. Calabrese added that Vachi made the people back in Chicago nervous because he knew so much about the skim going on in Las Vegas. Calabrese said he was in a van parked right next to Vachi's car. Calabrese had left the van's sliding door open a crack as he waited for Vachi to leave work. He had already spread a tarp on the floor to pick up drained blood. When he heard footsteps as Vachi approached the van, he flung open the door and tried to get Vachi into the van. They struggled, and Joe Hansen, the van's driver and another reputed killer, came over to help. Once they got Vachi inside the van, Nick Calabrese pulled out a .22 caliber gun with a silencer, and Hansen drove off. He said that Vachi begged for his life and assumed he was being robbed and begged Calabrese to take his wallet and all his money. He said, take my money, take my wallet, Calabrese recalled. Then he said, oh, no, I'm not going to say anything. Did you say anything to him? The prosecutor asked. No, Calabrese said. When Vachi realized he was going to be murdered for being subpoenaed, he broke down in tears and promised he wouldn't tell the grand jury anything. A second later, Calabrese aimed the .22 at Vachi's head and fired, but the gun jammed. He fired another round through Vachi's head as he pleaded for his life. Hansen asked if Calabrese was sure Vachi was dead, and Calabrese replied that he was sure he was, but he shot Vachi in the head again. Although the killers had agreed to bury Vachi's body 45 minutes away in the desert and already dug the hole, they decided it was too dangerous to drive around so long with the body and simply dumped Vachi in a canal. Vachi's body was found wrapped in black plastic in a dry canal bed on 48th Street on June 7, 1986. Near the body was a .38 caliber pistol that had been stolen in Chicago. The gun was empty and had not been fired recently. Investigators speculated it was left at the scene as a message that the Chicago mob was behind the killing although word on the street of Chicago was that one of the killers, probably Calabrese, had accidentally dropped the gun from a jacket pocket and left it on the scene by mistake. 